Hey y'all, it's Betsy and Mom from Happily Ever After, etc. And welcome back to another garden tour. So this is the end of August garden tour. It has been hot. So hot, like <laughs> 95, 96 most of the month, but it's been feels like, we always look at the feels like 106, 108, 110. Because of course in Alabama, we're zoned what, 9B? Is that a right? 8B. 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 I always get mixed up. It's hot, but it's also just humid beyond all. all belief. Even if it hasn't rained for weeks, it's humid. Humid every day. So. Every day. This last week, however, with all of the hurricanes, yes. it has been raining here nonstop. We, uh, we are not close enough to the hurricane this time to get actual hurricane weather, but we are almost always close enough to get the wind and the rain and the storm the aspects. Bands. The bands of rain. Yeah. That's what we get. So, you know, we're, we're safe. We're glad we're safe. But it's it's a lot of rain, and honestly, the rain isn't bad. It's the rain is good. It's great for and us. Pulled everything down. Like, so we really really good. We spent a lot of the week in between the rains, um, pruning things back so that maybe they'll have a chance to. I'm looking to see what the she's, temperature she's is. Looking at the temperature. Oh, 79. 79. That's the lowest it's been all summer. Yeah, feels like 79. <laughs> That's pretty good. So. We're, we've been pruning everything so that hopefully oh, yeah. things will rebound with all the rain for the cooler months of the autumn. Because, of course, our growing season it goes is, until October, It goes November. until, like, really until we start getting cold, which some some years can be November. Um, so we still have several months of growing season, but everything has to make it through that heat of the summer. Yeah. It's almost like we have a first growing season and a second grow growing season true and like yeah. we could plant all new annuals right now and they'd be around for months but who wants to do that no no, no one no, no one no. wants to do that so I'm, I'm done with the annuals we're gonna go ahead and show you what has survived the uh heat wave of the summer what mom just pruned back what lantana and the rebecca the gar oh, is yeah. doing beautiful and a lot of mom's things are doing great yeah. are not doing great at my house i we live 10 minutes apart her lantana is like it's feet steroid feet high and wide and mine is beautiful my lantana is the one thing in my yard one annual it's a perennial in my yard that still looks green and is blooming the petunias and the zinnias this year a lot of my petunias are done too. they look done i just some of them are done i pruned oh, okay. them all back because they look awful yeah um the lantana still looks great, but it does not look as good as mom's. Yeah. So, and my gara was standing up. It was standing straight up so and, yesterday, and now it's all flopped over. But it's still, rain. it's still blooming. Pretty. Mine is flopped over, but it's not blooming. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. prune it back. Yeah. It's, it's so just, we just got so much rain. I mean, torrential rain. It's good though. It's yeah. good for everything, and I will take rain over hurricanes any day i oh, mean yeah we didn't have to evacuate we're not in danger a lot of people have it really oh, yeah. hard this week and we we don't so we're very fortunate we're very fortunate in that aspect because we have had to oh, we yeah. have lost power we have had to evacuate we're we're only 30 minutes from florida yeah. so you know we're gonna go ahead and start with a garden tour of this side i suppose and then we will take you to the other side which Really got pruned. Hard. I was gonna say they both got pruned hard. This back woodland half is probably the the least amount of flowers of the whole front yard. Yes. This half is is more flowers. So we'll start with the yes. okay half and then move on to the better half. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So this is my woodland garden. This is what we call the woodland garden because it's basically. It's mom doesn't really have wood. She's straight up downtown, like right back here. That yellow truck, that's literally downtown Ozark. Yeah. I'm two blocks from the courthouse. <laughs> We've got the police station, the courthouse, everything right downtown. But she's got this row of azaleas, azaleas and, weeds. and weeds and trees and just yeah. what we call woodland because it's all uh, pine trees. Big pine trees and so it trees. no matter how much compost and mulch she puts down here it has pine needles so I do have a 
I do have a butterfly bush, but I didn't prune it. I forgot to prune it. That's okay. But, but it's it still... Again. It's, yeah. It's got a few thorns on it. And butterfly bushes are ones that will bloom yeah. even with the old blooms still on them, yeah. but they'll do better if you, if you prune them. Yes. It's a volunteer crepe myrtle. Huh. A little pink one. Yesterday. Well, might as well leave it. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it for now. See what happens. Might let it be a bush. Might make it be a tree. Yeah. Mom gets a lot of volunteer crepe myrtles with all of her mature ones around here. I don't know where that came from because that one over there is white. I don't know. But, Maybe um, a bird. This is a knockout rose that I cut way back. Yeah. But it is already putting out new growth. And all that red is. It has buds. New growth on it. Right here's bud right here. Here's a bud right here. So oh, it will It'll probably bloom. rebloom this season. I weeded like crazy over here this past week. And I limbed up the bottom of this vitex. Yes, right? so she wants this vitex and the other one to be more of a tree than a bush so she can keep growing things yeah. under it. Because vitex can get 20, 30 20 feet, feet tall if they're happy in and their like spot. 12 feet wide and I don't need that right She here. doesn't need a 12 I foot wide bush. She I wants a tree. Wants the structure. Um, I do have some hookeras. Hookeras here, but the heat really. They really did not like, did the, not heat. like the heat. This one probably looks the best. I think they'll come back. They should come back next fall or next spring, if next not this spring. fall. I yeah. think they'll probably be done for the year. Yeah. Your fern is naturalizing My fern like crazy. Is going like crazy on both sides. But that's not bad. No, I like it. And if they come up in a spot you don't want, you can just exactly. dig them up and move them. But this is my little, one of my bare root daylilies, daylilies. from the daylily box. I never remember what that box was called. But um, I'll, I'll, Gilbert Wild. Gilbert Wild. I'll put it on the screen. Yeah. But you can see bare root versus these plants were here last year. Last year. It's not a huge size difference. They're growing very quickly. But these are still blooming. This one has mm -hmm. buds on it right here. And flowers right here. So it's just... It the like rain it. is, yeah. It, it, it got rained on. Pulling everything down. You keep saying you're going to work on this path, and uh, it's been all it's summer. It's been so hot. I just haven't it might be a to. fall project. I'm thinking it's going to be fall. Yeah. And then this... Of course, this one is blooming too. We fell down too. I mean, they're beautiful. They're just uh, not loving the rain. Oh, they're such pretty flowers, though. And you can see them forever. Yes, the bright, bright yellow. They're called Stella, Stella Dora. So I'm going to have some more over here that are having buds on them. Yep. And there's my other little bare root. Bare root. Look how big it is. It, they really are. I think next year they'll almost look the same size. Yeah, I think so. And of course, day lilies are the type of plant that you can separate yes. as they get bigger, um, or you can let them continue to just grow to fill in a space. So c depending on how they yeah. do, she may eventually split these and continue to fill in this whole this area. area. I think you want this whole area to be peppered with them up front. Yes, I do. And then. Um, I did have on this side and here and over there, I had some uh, bubblegum vista. Oh, the super tunias. Super tunias, and they just pooped they out. They just pooped out. Right, right there. You can see where there they were. One there, one over there, and yeah. one on the other side. And they just did not make it through the heat. And so, sometimes they will come back in our zone, and sometimes yeah, they won't. So we'll always leave the the root of the plant right there. But so we'll see next year because all of the moms except for one came back this yes. year. And the um, gomfrina came back from last year. These were all last year plants. Yeah, those are there's I believe three. Three in there. In there. And then mm -hmm. my black eyed Susans. Um, one bloomed really well. The other one's a baby, and the other one's trying to die. <laughs> so um, we'll see what happens with that. My dogwood is not happy with me. He's right on the now. struggle bus. Yeah. The, I cut back. Some the oak leaf hydrangea is doing good though, yeah, and I you got back, all the bad weed all the bad back. Weeds. I have a, I have a bad, weedy bush back there. And no matter what we do, it just keeps coming back. Yeah. You need to put some of that vine and stump killer on it. 
I just did a video about that vine and stump killer for a vine growing by my house. But like I said in that video, you can use it on anything you want, don't want to keep growing when there's good plants around it. So yeah. that would be a good spot to try it. And the Veronica doesn't like me either right now. It's no, mine is... Pitiful. I cut it all back. I cut mine all back. It was awful, but it had, down it had fresh green all at the base. So yeah. I'm hoping it'll come back That's before fall. Hoping. If um, not, it'll come back next year. Over here, that's where we, I had some cone flowers and the. the this petunia. is all petunia, and now it's all gone. Is, this is spiderwort. It's spiderwort, which is up, a um, natural kind of plant, but mom plant likes it. it. It's it is a plant. Some people, people call it a weed. Some people call it a flower. It's you know. People plant it in the north, but yeah. down here it comes up naturally. And it can be very invasive in certain areas. It's yeah. not super invasive here, so she leaves it where and she likes it. it. Pretty little blue flowers. Yeah. This hydrangea is doing fabulous. It's supposed to be blue, but yep. it's not. Mom keeps forgetting to put the and the blue stuff on it. All my glads finally died. Finished. Yeah. Um, my gardenia bush has gotten very full. It's very dark green, which is it nice. Is. And I'm hoping that it will bloom next year. This year didn't have any blooms. On no, but year. hopefully next year. So, All right, um, other side. Boo, 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 so this part of the garden here is kind of all a uh, work in progress. She, she hasn't really started planting anything on this side until this year. Yeah. And you really only planted... One, two, three, four, four or five things maybe this yeah, year. And then we did a lot of these zinnias from seed. Oh my gosh. And, and they cut those back. Yeah, they were like this tall. Lime green. I don't know. No, they were in last month's garden video if you want to go they back were. and watch that. I, um, I cut them. They were beautiful from seed and I we direct seeded them. So And I made bouquets for me and my two neighbors. And now, they were supposed to be two feet tall, and they were four feet, they which were at least four feet tall. I think we have learned that almost all seeds for zinnias down here, if you direct seed them, they're, gonna they're just going to so grow crazy. like nuts because we get such hot weather, and they really like that, and they grow like yeah. crazy, and then they just kind of peter out in the heat, heat of the yeah. summer. Now, you'll see over there, I cut my other zinnias back. They are already starting to leaf out and bud out again so so i cut these all back to one foot and, and I'm hopefully they will come back okay. again they're green on the they're inside. cut and come again flowers so they often will i mean look at this one. Oh yeah they're trying they're they're, they're trying. trying they're putting out new leaves they're they're not giving up the ghost but we'll see yep. and then so my Japanese maple. Her Japanese maple is on the struggle bus hard, but it still has out. green. It has a few leaves on it. We'll see. I think the zinnias got too tall around it and really overcrowded it because they were supposed to be a two lot. Feet tall. Yeah, they were supposed to be a lot shorter than they were. And, um, but everything else I planted. Mom. This uh, standard rose. It's pink, light pink. Yes. And it looks really pretty. It's just behind right behind that butterfly that bush, butterfly. which with everything else short right now looks weird. Yeah. But when everything else is full, it looks really pretty. It looked really nice, but I cut, I must have cut about six to 12 inches off because yeah. it was like full and wet. And I just cut back my rose standards in my yard. I'll link that video down below. I've never done it before, but I just yeah. kind of pruned it how mom really said. A little roundish looking again, and we'll see. And we'll how see how it goes. It goes. Oh, that's a new one for me. I've not yeah. ever used that particular one. Now my, my the mums are looking really mums, pretty. I cut those back Fourth of July, and, and they are around here. That down here in the south, you can plant mums in the ground. They will come back every year. A lot of people in my videos are surprised that I plant them in the ground because for a lot of people, you pot them up on the porch and then you toss them at the end yeah. of the season. And in our more tropical, humid, whatever, heat zones, they're perennials. They will keep coming back. They will keep blooming. Now, I have found that not all mums do as well perennially as others. The white ones seem to come back really well. The yellows seem to come back really well. Um, I found my burgundy pink ones, my burgundies and the pinks don't come back as well. And so I'm wondering if they're just... A lot of those pink colors are newer. They're trying to get those more pastel, pretty colors that people want. 
Maybe. I don't, I don't think I maybe they're not strong enough strains yet, as opposed to the white and the yellow, which are mm -hmm. very traditional. You can find them at any store for yeah. $5 kind of plants. My, I had planted some lupins. White. Oh, she planted some super white super in tunias there. in there. Found out, and they didn't do well because it didn't have any drain holes. Yep. It so flooded, and flooded she... And they just drowned. Yeah. So I turned it over, and I had to buy a special bit to drill through that concrete. And that concrete is about this thick, y'all. But she got drain holes in it now, so next season next it's... Year. It's ready to go. I also have a hydrangea back there that is really on the struggle bus. She and bought it for clearance yeah. price, and it was pretty when she bought it, it but... It was half and half. It was yeah. too hot to plant, and, it and it's not... It's not living through the heat of the summer in his bucket, that's for sure. Uh, what's going to happen with those um, peonies and lupins? We planted peony tubers and lupins from seed back in here. This was their first year, and so they were all really small. We're hoping they make it through the summer and the winter, and next year they'll be bigger and better. But those are the kind of plants that if they can make it and establish themselves, they're great. But they don't always establish well. Yeah, they, they don't like me right no. This is one of the um, petunias, super vista, bubblegums. See, so I just, left it in there. We'll see if it comes back next year. Yep. So I, I just pruned all mine in a video. You can go watch it. This is all her April night salvia, or May night. Which one is it? April. April. And it, she pruned it back. It's I already leafing back. Yesterday. Yeah. It's, it's got greenery, so I think it'll come back. And I also. I cut back some of its lantana because it was just encroaching too far. Away. It starts really like yeah. Yeah. taking over all the other things that need space. Yeah, I mean, this thing is huge. So. This is all one plant. Yeah. One thing. That one, that's, that one, that's another one. That one uh, and back, branch down there is like as big as my thumb. Back by the porch, it's not as big a deal for it to yeah. kind of take over because it just back. fills space. I might move, yeah, some of it back there. Yeah. And over here, it kind of just like I, I don't know weaves like in it. and out. I, I'm trying to decide. That's better, but it's still, still not, good. not what she wanted. But this is their really cool. second year or third year for the lantana. That's one of the first things you planted. I think third year. I think and I have some daisies in here. See, and they got covered up yep. by the lantana. And I have another one over here. And another one back there. And they all got covered up by the lantana. So I do think I'm going to move them. The black eyed Susans, they did really well. Yeah. But they are struggling with the lantana. They are struggling to, to fight out the lantana. I think I'm going to move the lantana. I'm they might need to. The and the... The rutabecchia, this is this year. This this I year, she this just year. planted these, and, and they're, they're, tall. they're like, you know, yeah, they're doing really two well. And a half, three feet tall. So I did plant some mums in there, and they're tall, but again, the lantana is pushing them out. There's a little baby gecko. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, same thing with my hydrangea. He's he's beautiful, but he's he always struggles in the heat right here. Yeah. And uh, and he's just fighting have, everything. I probably should have taken off these last couple of leaves because they look terrible. Yeah, but but once you take them off, the problem is once you take off the the burnt ones, then the ones underneath it get burnt. So, yeah, so we'll see. We'll it's kind of hit or miss on I have taking them off. More of these um, Stelladoros. Stelladoros that I planted from uh, bare root. And look at how nice. I have three. One, two, and the third one is hiding back there under the lantern. So she's got them all woven throughout here. And then these are the these are alyssum that sweet alyssums that we planted from seed from the, the milk, milk jug. jug. So yeah. look how big. definitely got to do more of those next year. Mine are big and beautiful, but they are not blooming. And yours are blooming. And, and are blooming, yeah. I made sure to plant mine in more shade because they said that was better in the south. Ooh, a hummingbird. Right. Oh, nope. Oh, he's gone. I've seen that many hummingbirds, but I did not feel my feeders this year. Yeah. Sorry. He went too fast, but I planted my sweet alyssum in more shade because they said in the heat of the summer that would keep it from dying. Yeah. But yours is still alive and blooming in the heat. Yeah. 
and mine, a couple of them are not blooming at all, and a couple of them are straight up dead. Hmm. So, I don't know if it's soil. Mom has a lot better soil than really I do, soil. Um, but all of her stuff seems to get through the heat, struggles better than mine. It might be because, like, this whole area gets shade in the afternoon. It just gets morning Maybe. sun over here. But I mean, sun goes up and down. I planted most of that kind of stuff in afternoon shade and it's, it's it gets yeah. kind of partial shade in the afternoon. Who knows? Because I do everything on this side in the afternoon because it's shady. Yeah. It's nice. Um, this, I want to say, my funky little bird bath. Bird bath. My grandmother gave me that. Oh my gosh. When Betsy was like four. Yeah. It has traveled with us all over the world. So. <laughs> I will say this was more of the those are the super tunis, the new yellow ones for this one. year and they were beautiful they for were a very great, long time but they just they petered out in the heat in the and heat. they are trying to come back yeah I, I cut them back so hopefully they will like, look there's one oh, one it's tiny got flower. A flower on it yeah. so hopefully they will the come one on back the other side's not looking as good but this one is a I think it might be gone. This one might be dead, dead. It's so hard this time of year to know if it's but just them back. They look terrible. heat burned or dead, dead. And these, these, Alyssum, they're doing great. Oh. They get more sun than that side. That side is definitely, everything blooms on this side first and then that side. So, so, but this side is almost a mirror of the other side up to around here and then it starts being different. Yeah. So, and mom has... You saw my new little hummingbird. This is mom's new hummingbird. Mm -hmm. We got them at the at a kind of end of the summer clearance sale at our local nursery. Yep. Oh, her cone flowers are doing really well. And we need one. to I have one save some seeds. Not doing well. One is back underneath there and it doesn't look well at all. Ooh, look, a butterfly going to sleep. Uh-oh. Or not a butterfly, a bumblebee. But yeah, that one coneflower is doing great. So but I really hacked at this lantana. I cut yes. off a lot. Now, yeah. I will tell you that this side, I, I moved one of these mums. And this mum is not liking me very much. But the rest, the other two are doing really well. So they should bloom in the fall like they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. They all bloomed in the spring. So we'll see if they bloom in the fall. They... They're definitely getting ready to. They're starting to put out new buds. They're starting to put out buds. My ones over there have more buds than them. Yes. Now these, the salvia. April, April night, night salvia. These I cut back on this side a couple days before I cut back that side. And look at how much more greenery it is. There's a lot more green and even a few um, buds already. Look yeah. at. Yeah. Yeah. And here's one right here. So. But you can see hopefully where. Hopefully they the will come back. It just covered it, and they were not doing well. No, they were struggling. So. so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Now, this fern over here, not fern, um, mom's, it has buds all over it. it is yeah, gonna they're going to bloom very soon. Mm -hmm. But it's not bad to have them bloom at different times. Yep. And some of your hostas under here are looking decent. Those are hostas decent. Are looking good. I, those hostas are doing fine. The ones on the other side are doing fine. Hopefully they'll just keep getting one of bigger them, and bigger. One of them I just lost. I don't know yeah. why or how, but it happened. All right. Across the path. All right. This side, she's been planting a lot of new things over here since this whole garden bed is really new yeah. this year. This was a big focus and a lot of the foxgloves in here that we grew from seed and our milk jugs, milk jugs are they did great they did great but there's they're biannuals so when they turn black like this does that mean they're dead dead or does that mean they'll come back cuz a lot of mine know. look like that i don't know i'm going to just leave them be and see yeah i'm not going to pull them out i think they'll do okay because that's really was the first year for them they should come mm -hmm. back bigger next year that's what they should do but that's i d i should. thought they didn't die back to the ground a hundred percent especially in the heat they, they die die the so hopefully oh. they'll come back next year and this rose i just trimmed it back two days ago it was up to here yeah Full and then she planted one two three of these buttercup oh, bushes well. 
and they get they are supposed to get pretty tall three feet by two feet and by they're three doing feet. really well so and i think they really fill in i like them on i like them a lot they're a lot of they're a softer yellow than a lot of the other yellows you have. I'm hoping they'll make it because they're more, I was looking at them, they're more of a tropical mm -hmm. plant. And we're we're right on that border where we can do tropicals, but not Sometimes all of them the do winter. well in the winter. Mm -hmm. And then or, she's got white gara, got the little cone, flower, cone flowers. Cone Your bee balm's actually blooming a little bit. It Mine, it looks great, but it has never bloomed. Oh, I didn't think you had bee balm. Yep, we bought them the same day, oh, okay. from the same place. Yeah, they're blooming. I'm, I'm not sure I like them in this spot. I may move them next year because they're. I planted underplanted my coneflowers with them. Oh, okay. I think they only get two feet tall. Yeah, so they're pretty small. I might move them more up front, mm -hmm. but there's so there's so much pink in here. It is. I am not the pink fiend like Elizabeth is. I'm sorry, you're wearing a pink shirt and a pink garden, and yeah, telling me you don't like I don't pink. Know why. But I am gonna trade out this. Butterfly bush. I have a navy blue navy one. blue one that she just got. I'm put the navy blue one there, and I think I'm gonna move this one over to the other side in the in the woodland area. Woodland garden. That'll and, be pretty. Um, because she, I think I she's more contrasting color. colors over here. Yeah, I don't like it. It's, and then you can hardly see it. these two salvias are a deep burgundy, which are really pretty and dark. And I cut them. And we off. just cut those. I need to cut mine back because I was looking at it today, and it's really. Tall and spindly. Yeah, they were just so tall. That they I did great, and they bloomed continuously all they summer, did. even in the heat of summer. But they're so spindly. They were looking kind of weird. And then this was your prized super tunia. It was you can see the super tunia right here, the yeah, giant this one. one. And that one. Those two. It right it went really from here all the way over to here yeah. in the heat of summer, and it started. It got huge and started in like yeah. April. Yeah, March, exactly. like it, it was very early. It was from last year as well. Yeah, it came back. Year. So I'm hoping it'll come back. So all my um, gumprina came back from last year. Yeah, I got, that is two plants. Yes, I two might plants. Move one of those. Also. For some reason, my gumprina did not do very well this year. I'm gonna cut it back usually back does fall. gangbusters. And then she limbed up this vitex. I really like it a lot. Now, this is one thing I do. In my garden, I keep these little buckets in here. Which You've probably seen them. Goofy, but it lets me throw weeds in. So when she's walking around, she just puts and them in a weed bucket. Know, usually, they're hiding behind plants. You can't really see them that much. Nobody can hear you. I'm sorry. They're hiding behind the plants. So once those mums bloom, you won't even be able to yeah. see them. It's just because she just pruned everything back so hard that you can see them. Fourth of July, they are just starting to get buds on them again. Yeah. Ooh, it's starting to rain. I told you it was going to rain. The weather said it wasn't going to, but. And um, these are my. These are the tall pink zinnias. And um, they are starting to leaf back out again too. Yeah. And that's my catnip. This is one of my other. This is where all the front foxgloves were. She just cut those back. I cut those back. I forgot to do the other side. Yeah, that's okay though. But, and then um, this is a stand of Louisiana iris from my great grandmother's house that we moved this summer. She divided it from the back, and it's doubled, tripled, tripled. It's so much bigger. It's a really pretty yellow flower in the spring. In the spring. So we moved it this spring. So hopefully next spring it will bloom. I'm hoping. But it, it loves that area. Yeah. Right I'm going to, I'm definitely going to have to get some of that at some point. And it's a real pretty pale yellow. So it'll yeah. look good at your garden. Yeah. So. Maybe next year I can move some. This is my lone little azalea that made it through. The All the cutting and removing yeah. and the I mean, cut down of the giant magnolia tree. Yep. Now these. Black-eyed Susans, they are loving this. This yeah. is two plants. And they're just killing it. two plants over there. They're not as big as these. These are just doing well. And the cat mint the over cat here mint is it. loving this spot and is starting to put out new buds. Mm -hmm. Cat mint is a perennial, and it typically will bloom first in the spring, profusely, and then maybe again in the fall. And, and you can see. And it's doing it. great here, so... That back there is where I had some of that Veronica. Veronica, and it just hates us right now. Yeah, it just hates it. And I don't know why. I should have put these. Let's just say you put Vincas the Vinca like over here instead, but I just you just put them in the back for some reason. Yep. Who knows? 
They're pretty. <laughs> they look okay right here. Fine. Everything look at this. You can Butterfly see here's the Veronica we've been talking about. It's it's mm -hmm. still green. It's still leafy, but it just Did it looks grow. like heck. And these um, zinnias are coming back. Wow. Yeah, Very they nice. already have little flower buds. Yeah, some of them are doing really well, better than others. And these were all direct seeded. And then these are also some of my bare root Stelladoras. Mom. And then she has this rose on this trellis that has grown straight up and through. It does not care there's a trellis there at all. I don't know what I'm going to do about I don't know. I, you need to grow it on a fence or something where it can really stretch out. Maybe, I guess. I don't know. We moved it from the backyard because we thought it would do better up here. <laughs> Ooh, another baby gecko. So everything else is, I mean, it's... It's all doing some well. Some stuff is looking pitiful and some stuff's looking good. These buttercups are pretty. I'm kind of sad I didn't get any of those. They really... They did really well. We'd never grown them before. We I didn't did. know anything about them. Just found them on the Clarence um, table and took a chance on them. No, I paid for those. I don't think they No, were those were on clearance. You can watch the clearance video. I will oh. link it below. That's the only reason you bought them. You paid full price for the sunflowers. Oh, okay. I she did not pay full price for these. These were on the clearance video. But I like them. And they look really sweet by that old stove. Yes. So. Which, I tell you, we had to be first. We were, uh, we were maybe 10th in line at that point. We went to an estate, estate sale, sale to get that. She wanted it so bad. Come over here, Mom. You're, I'm trying to put the garden in the backdrop, and you insist on standing in front of your car. Oh, I like my car. Your car is not that fancy for a video. <laughs> so that is everything in August. If you watched my garden tour, which was very quick and sweet because everything's stressed and there's not much fun to show you, um, Mom's garden's definitely doing better this year. Mine did better last year. So some years... Yeah. It, it, well, I didn't hardly have anything out here. It's all nature, you know? It yeah. is what it is, and hopefully... Things will rebound, and next year they'll do just fine. Everything was little, little, little yeah. last year. And, and we still have several months, so hopefully things will come back and keep doing well. But for now, I am hot and humid, and we're going to go do something else. Say bye, Mom. Bye.